Hey Sharp Go Photo Challengers, welcome to week number eight. Let's take a look at some of these shots that were sent in by my good friend Ingrid. Ingrid, thank you for so so very much for joining us on this challenge. Really appreciate it. Uh, she is the proud over, owner of a DSLR, so I'm hoping that yeah, she, I'm hoping Ingrid that you join us on some of our further challenges uh, as we get more into uh, exploring DSLR and manual because uh, I know that you've got an eye for this stuff and so I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of shots you you turn in but I thank you for participating in the smartphone challenge this week uh, and so let's take a look at the shots that you got you're really eager you got them in first before anybody else which is why I'm doing this review now so let's take a look here. All right, spinners in negative. And you're using your Samsung GT phone, okay. Wondering what kind of apps you use. What the hell am I looking at? Hmm, all right, this is trippy. It makes me think too, that's the point. If it's gonna be an abstract shot, um, if it's something that I can't even really tell what it is, it still has to make me think. And so if it makes me stop and try to decipher what am I looking at here, if it's something that's been processed uh, heavily, like you know, Kim Lawrence has a lot of heavy processing to her shots, which make me stop and think, what is this? I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm looking at, but also uh, trying to figure out, all right, what does the, what does this image evoke? What does it do for me? So if it's simply abstract for the sake of being abstract, it's not going to really do much for me. It's not going to it's not going to uh, evoke any emotion really. So uh, if it uh, if it is going to be abstract, it has to be abstract for a purpose. So this here. This is making my brain scramble a little bit. What am I looking at? Spinners? Okay, so I'm guessing it's the spinners outside that blow in the wind. So you got a bit of a blend of the of a slow uh, slow shutter. You're shooting at 1 over, 6, 1 over 17 in your phone, so uh, slow shutter speed. You're going to get that motion blur effect with uh, fast-moving objects. So I'm, so I'm guessing that uh, that's the, the, the two spinners spinning around. And uh, must have thrown it through some filter to... Uh, to give it the negative effect, but also then some added color effects here. So I'm wondering what else, what was your further process in doing this? Either way, it's pretty trippy, looks pretty well composed. I like how you've got, uh, you've got two of them lined up here. You combine, there's a motion blur effect going on. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's doing something to my brain. Uh, windmills. And by the way, that's also something... This, this is also something at least that's really creative to do with your phone because God knows over the last five years, look at the number of apps that have just been thrown out there into the market that allow us to do some really trippy stuff. And at first, all the effects, all the filters that you can apply, they're either they're kind of hokey, a lot of the ones that you get in Instagram and even some of the ones that uh, that some other apps use uh, by default, they look really, you know, they're, they're not, not the best. But, uh, you know, a lot of processing, processing apps that come out nowadays, you can do a lot of great things with it. It gives you a lot of control, but you can layer the effects. And so you can put effects on top of effects and kind of blend together and just kind of figure out what look will look the best. You know, it's, it's really opened up uh, people's abilities and what you can, what's capable with a smartphone, such as that. Windmills near Leamington. That is a nice looking, sh okay, first of all, you got the horizon right. Horizon is nice and straight across. I'll be, I'll be really happy if you didn't have to crop, if you didn't have to straighten the picture out uh, in post. If you did, no worries, but I love it. That's, you know, when you're gonna shoot landscape shot, make sure you get the horizon nice and straight. That is perfectly straight, great. Uh, and also, this is a very nicely composed shot. Also, I like how it's, you know, it, it, the spring is on the way, so you know, bye bye. I'm 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 happy seeing winter in my rear view mirror, you know. So, you know, this is very nice to see. Um, but yeah, look at the awesome color going on here, and also you got the windmills. Uh, it's it's a nice composition where the the uh, the horizon is dividing the the image straight in half. Uh, so you have the snow on the bottom and the sky on top. Um, yeah, it's a nice looking sunset. Good. And honey crisp apples out of storage in Norfolk. Alrighty. These are taken back in that's in February. Yeah, that one's February and this one's April. Okay, cool. So this one here. Hmm. Okay. 
Uh, immediately, if you have any control over the focus, then uh, try to be cautious about where what you're going to be focusing on. Because immediately my eye went right to the foreground here. So the bottom half of this image is out of focus. The focus is more somewhere right in the center here. But because you're looking at a sea of apples here, uh, for some reason my eye immediately go, went for like this big red one here, these giant ones here. So immediately it's out of focus. I had to find the focus. And so that's why... Uh, at first, I thought the whole image was a little bit blurry, uh, but uh, I just had to find the focus here. This would also be ordinarily if you were shooting with, with shooting with with a DSLR, or if you had the ability to. Oh, I see you're on your BlackBerry for this one. If you had the ability to uh, to change your aperture or change your f-stop uh, on your smartphone, then you would set it to a higher number, thus expanding the depth of field, so you'd get more of this ocean of apples in focus. Rather, when it's a small number, like it says down here in the bottom right, f2.2, it's a small f-stop, so that depth of field is going to be very narrow. So that's why uh, you get the middle portion of these apples in focus, and then those in the back and the front are out of focus. That's what affects your, uh, your, uh, uh, what, uh, what parts of the image are in focus. So ordinarily, if you could bump it up to you know, f7.1, f13, or f21, you get more of the image in focus. And so it would uh, yeah, that's usually what you do for landscape shots or when you're looking at uh, you know, if you want to capture more of this in focus. But uh, other than that, yum, apples, pretty good. Um, yeah, aside from the focusing issue, I would have focused more on the front here. That's your choice. Um, but uh, man, this looks good. I miss shooting this sort of stuff. Then I could just kind of reach and grab one. Oh, I love honey crisp apples. But nice. Good job, Ingrid. Really love that you uh, came in on this challenge. I appreciate it. I really hope that you'll participate in the next few challenges coming up. If you guys have any questions, please throw them my way. Uh, look at the previous critiques to learn more about how to shoot in manual. But if you guys do have any questions as we go forward, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, you can either tweet, uh, you can message me directly or tweet using the hashtag SGPhoto. Uh, I follow them, follow along. So as you progress, uh, as you uh, post shots during the week or as you just have questions or tips, I do follow that. I will see it. I will respond. Uh, if you do want to get more people in on the challenge, be sure to head on over to the sharpgoat.com uh, website. Click on blog. And that will be updated regularly with what is the new challenge that is out this week? What, uh, uh, what are the critiques that have come out for last week? So the next challenge coming up is going to be Signs of Spring. So you can click on the blog post for that and find out all the details uh, and see a brief glimpse at uh, what uh, was submitted for last week for, uh, for, the, smartphone for the smartphone picks. Um, and also included in each blog post, there are links to the photo at the uh, Facebook gallery. So you can go up, head on over and give uh, all these submissions some feedback of your own. That's the whole point. Everybody needs to give some feedback, so contribute. And also uh, a link to the playlist so you can check out all of the video critiques of each person's submissions. So if you want to get someone in on the challenge, send them a link to the, to the most recent challenge. Tell them, hey, you should be doing this if you want to get better as a photographer and if you want to participate in a weekly challenge. It's a great group. I love that uh, the group is constantly growing a little bit. Uh, more people are starting to come in. They're starting to participate. But also I get more people uh, coming up to me who are, uh, who are messaging me saying that, listen, I don't participate, but I watch. I watch the video critique. I listen for the feedback. It's very valuable. I love seeing other people's shots. So that's one way that they can participate as well. If they don't want to get out and start shooting right away, great. But you can watch other people's submissions, other people's video critiques, and learn from that uh, as well. So that is one way that you can also participate. So again, thank you, Ingrid, for participating in this week. I really hope you come back for next week's challenge, and we'll see you later.